Hello, and welcome to the Word of Truth, the program that's designed to help you understand the Bible. My name is Brother Martin, and I'll be your teacher for today. Reading for me today is Brother Benaniah from the House of Jacob Bible Study Class. As always, sisters and brothers, we bring you a topic from the scriptures here. Today's topic will be Jesus, the God of the creation. When you mention the name Jesus, most think people think it was a child that was born from a virgin, which is correct. But what we're going to do is show you in this, in this uh, lesson is, we're going to show you Jesus did not come into existence just with Mary. We're going to show you Jesus was around for a very, very long time to the point he was there even in the beginning. So without further ado, we're going to go straight to the scriptures. The first place we're going to today, sisters and brothers, is Genesis, the first chapter. Genesis 1 and 1. Genesis 1 and 1. When you get there, brother, go ahead and read. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So we don't know when this was, but we know there was a beginning. It say in the beginning, God, he created the heavens and earth. Go ahead and read. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Skip on down to verse 26 and read, brother. And God said... Now, we got God. He's about to say something here. Go ahead and read. Let us make man in our image. So, now we have God saying, let us, meaning more than one. So, what we need to find out, sisters and brothers, who is this us? Because I have heard that some people say it was an angel. Then you have other individuals saying it was a part of another creation. But what we need to find out is who is this us that God want to make in his image. So what we need to do, first of all, is find out where this word God derived from. In other words, where did the translation, is, what word was translated from to make this word God? Where was this word God translated from? Let's go to the Zondervan Pictorial Bible Big Dictionary, and we're going to look at the word Elohim. Elohim. Once again, that is the Zondervan Pictorial Bible Dictionary, and the word is Elohim. When you get that, brother, go ahead and read. Elohim, the most frequent Hebrew word for God. So this Elo Elohim word, it was used for the word God. In other words, this word God was translated from the Hebrew word Elohim. Go ahead and read. Over 2,500 times in the Old Testament. Uh -huh. Elohim is plural in form. It said it is plural in form. In other words, it actually means more than one. Go ahead and read. But it's singular in construction. And, but it's singular in construction. That's why when you hear the word God, you think it's one individual. But in actuality, it's more than one. Go ahead and read. Used with a singular verb or adjective. Go ahead. Elohim is plural in sense as well as form. It's plural in sense as well as in form. Go ahead and read. Elohim is the earliest name of God in the Old Testament. And we, once again, we found out Elohim was the earliest name for God. So now, what we got to do now is we're going to the New Testament and we're going to look at the beginning also. Because in the, in the uh, Old Testament, say, in the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. Now we need to find out what the New Testament said about the, uh, the beginning. We're going to go to John, the first chapter. John 1 and 1. John 1 and 1. When you get there, brother, go ahead and read. In the beginning was the Word. Oh, now we back at the beginning again. But it says here, in the beginning was the Word. Go ahead and read. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Not only this Word was with God, this Word was God. So how many of you see that? You find two. You find the Word, and then you have find God. But this Word was God also. Now you find, talk to most individuals, they say this was just the Word that the Lord was speaking. But what we're going to find out who this word is, because to me it sounds like this word is the individual. Go ahead and read. The same was in the beginning with God. Uh -huh. All things were made by him. Now, it said all things were made by who? By God? Yeah. But the one that is called the word, word of God. God. Go ahead and read. And without him was not anything made that was made. No, and, but it here it says, what nothing made without this word. So that's why you have most people saying that was the Lord speaking it, and then it was created. But we're going to show you this word is an actual individual. So what we're going to do is point out who this word is. Let's go to uh, Revelations, the 19th chapter. Revelations 19. 
Revelations 19, and we're going to pick it up at verse 11. Revelations 19 and 11. When you get there, Brother Benaniah, go ahead and read. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. Now, right here in Revelation 19 chapter, this is right before the Lord, Lord is about to make his second coming. And he said, and before the Lord return, you're going to have the heavens to roll back like the scroll. That is why it's saying here, and I saw heaven open. So this is representing the coming of the Lord. Go ahead and read. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. Now, on his white horse, and the guy who sat upon him was called faithful and true. So this is, a, this is a very righteous individual. Go ahead and read. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Well, who do judge in righteousness and make war? Yes, that is none other than God. Go ahead and read. His eyes was a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. So this guy has a lot of authority, doesn't he? Because he, he, it says here, his eyes were like flame of fire, and on his head was many crowns. And that crown represents authority. And if he got many crowns, you know he got a lot of authority. Go ahead and read. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Go ahead. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. So now we got an individual. And we know who this was because it says it, he was a flame of fire and many throughout. So we know this is none other than Jesus. But just in case you are doubting, skip down to verse 16 and read. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And everybody know who that is. If you're a believer or you're not a believer, you know there's only one individual with that title, and that is Jesus. He is king of kings and Lord of lords. But what is his name? What is he called? He is called the word of God. So now we understand what, what, what John was saying. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Because there's two entities that make up the Godhead, which is known to us now as the Father and the Son. But in the beginning, they were just called God. And that is why we showed you that word Elohim to show you that it is a you know, plural word. You understand? So we know who God was saying when he said, let us make man in our image. It was the one known to us as the father and the one known to us as the son. But in the beginning, they both had the title of God. Let's go a little further now. Let's show you what happened though. Let's go to Isaiah the seventh chapter. Isaiah the seventh chapter. Here in Isaiah the seventh chapter, you know, you had, you had uh, the, uh, Israel, they had divided up in two nations. You had one, one part of the nation, which was ten tribes, called the nation of Israel, and then you had the other two tribes, we called the nation of Judah. Now what had happened is you had the Syrians that got with the king of Israel that was going to come up against the land of Judah. And it, at that time, it was King Ahaz. And King Ahaz uh, asked the Lord to help. So the Lord told him, yeah, you don't have to worry about anything. I'm going to take care of both of these nations, the Syrians and the, Is and the nation of Israel. And if you don't believe me, ask me a sign. And this is what the Lord going to tell him. Isaiah 7, and we're going to pick it up at verse 10. When you get there, brother, go ahead and read. Moreover, the Lord spake again unto Ahaz, saying, Ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God. Ask it either in the depths or in the height above. The Lord said, ask me anything. Ask me anything, I can do it. Because there is nothing impossible for God. You know, everybody think God, every, everybody think, some, well, most people think God got a limitation where he can go. God could do anything, anytime, and anywhere. All he got to do is speak it, and it's done. Go ahead and read. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, neither will I tempt the Lord. Lord Ahaz said, uh-uh, I'm not going to ask you for no sign, Lord, because I understand that a wicked in our adulterous generation, they ask for signs. Go ahead and read. And he said, Hear ye now, O house of David, is it a small thing for you to weary men, but will ye weary my God also? He told the house of David, you gonna, it's a small thing for you to weary man, but why you going to worry me with a small thing like that? Go ahead and read. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. The Lord said, I'm going to give you a sign. You don't have to ask me, but this is the sign I'm going to give you. Go ahead and read. Behold, a virgin shall conceive. He's a virgin going to conceive. Go ahead and read. And bear a son. And bring forth a son. Go ahead and read. And shall call his name Emmanuel. Okay. Now, he said, a virgin shall conceive, bring forth a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel. Now, first of all, we got to find out 
who this son is and what his name, what is this, this name, Emmanuel, what does it represent? Let's go to uh, Matthew, the first chapter. Matthew, the first chapter. Here in Matthew, the first chapter, Joseph and Mary, they, was, uh, uh, they were about to get married. But then Joseph found out that Mary had, was pregnant. So instead of him going all off the hook, putting her away or putting her to death, he was going to put her away privately. But the Lord here, he's going to intervene, and he's going to let Joseph know what this is all about because it was prophecy being fulfilled. Matthew 1 and 18. 1 and 18. When you get there, Brother Ben and I, go ahead and read, Brother. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. So now we're talking about the birth of Jesus Christ now. And it was on this wise. Go ahead and read. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph. In other words, they were engaged to get married. Go ahead and read. Before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. And you can imagine how Joseph fell. He hadn't laid with his wife yet. And then she was found with the, uh, with the child of the Holy Ghost. In other words, this child was from God. Go ahead and read. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. And, and, you know, that's a just brother. Because most men, if they find out that their wife is pregnant by somebody else, they will go off to the point where they might kill him. And he had every right to have a stone because she belonged to him. Go ahead and read. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream. So saying, now we got the Lord intervening and letting him know what is going on. Go ahead and read. Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. So the Lord let him know, hey man, don't you bother her. I put that there. This is from the Holy Ghost. Go ahead and read. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Oh, so she bring him forth. But then, didn't we just read Isaiah the seventh chapter? Mm -hmm. Where the Lord told him to ask him a sign? He said, I'm going to give you a sign. He said, a virgin shall conceive. Wasn't Mary a virgin? Mm -hmm. Haven't been touched by man? And who was this son that she was going to bring him? It is none other than Jesus. Go ahead and read. For he shall save his people from their sins. Not only is he going to bring forth a son, but he's going to save his people from their sins. Not everybody, but his people. Because when you belong to God, that's when you come under the banner of Jesus. And how you go about coming under the blood of Jesus is through baptism. But that is altogether another lesson. Keep reading, brother. Now, all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophets, saying. You know, and most people don't realize everything that the prophets wrote about have to come to pass. And this is being prophecy being fulfilled. Go ahead and read some more, brother. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son. Uh -huh. And they shall call his name Emmanuel. Didn't we just read that from Isaiah, the seventh chapter? The by, Verbatim, it says, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. Now, what we need to find out is, what does this name mean? Go ahead and read. Which being interpreted is God with us. And that is what it means. And God is what's going to dwell among man. So, in other words, Jesus himself, who is God, which we're going to you, show you throughout this lesson, was dwelling with man. God himself was dwelling among man. Let's go a little further. Let's look at it some more. Let's look at, you know, how we know he God, prophecy say he God, because we're going to look in the Old Testament, Testament again and find out about this child. Let's go to Isaiah, the ninth chapter. Because the word means God with us. The word Emmanuel means is interpreted from God being with us, right? And I do mean God, because the book tells you it's God. See how many titles this child have. Isaiah 9, and we're going to pick it up at verse 6. Isaiah 9 and 6. When you get that, Brother Ben and I, go ahead and read. For unto us a child is born. Oh, we got another child. Is this another child or the same one? Let's read. For unto us a child is born. Go ahead. Then. Unto us a son is given. And we know it's the son. Go ahead and read. Then the government shall be upon his shoulder. In other words, the kingdom going to be on his shoulder. Anybody who knows scriptures understand Jesus going to be here when the kingdom get here. And the government is going to be on his shoe because we're going to all come under the government of God when he reigns. Go ahead and reign. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Now we're going to look at some of these titles, sisters and brothers. Now, 
and his name shall be called Wonderful because God is a wonderful individual. He's more higher than anything. Go ahead and read. Counselor. Counselor, because if you want the right counsel, you go to God. And how you find out the counsel right is through his word, sisters and brothers. If you live by the word of God, sisters and brothers, your counsel cannot be bad. Go ahead and read. The mighty God. And he is also, this son is called the mighty God. You understand, sisters and brothers? So this son, this virgin, this son, uh, uh, this virgin that's gonna bring forth a son, he is called the mighty God. Mm -hmm. But the word Emmanuel means God being with us. Name some more of them titles. Go ahead and read. The everlasting the father. The everlasting father. Didn't we read that he created everything? Why is he called the everlasting father? Because he is the one that created man. The one known to us as the father. He didn't create man. It was the son that did all to create. He created all things in heaven and in earth. That is why he's called the everlasting father. That is why Jesus said, when you see me, you see the father. Because him and the father look identically, sisters and brothers. Go ahead and read some more. The prince of peace. Because when he reigns, there is nothing that's going to be, it's going to be peace all over. Because when he reigns, he's going to rule with a rod of iron. Either you're going to get right will be put out. You choose. But these are some of the titles this child has. And in these titles here, the only one that can have these titles is God, sisters and brothers. Let's go a little further. Let's go to Luke, the first chapter. Luke, the first chapter. Now that we established that this, this child has these titles, these titles, you understand? Wonderful. Counselor. The mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince, Prince of Peace. Peace. The only one can have those titles is God. That is why we know Jesus is the God of the creation. And we're going to show you throughout this lesson. Let's look at it some more. Let's go to, uh, let's go to Luke, the first chapter, and see what the message that the angel brought to Mary. Uh, Luke 1, and we're going to pick it up at 30. Luke 1 and 30. When you get there, go ahead and read. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Because the angel came and told Mary, hey, listen here. You done found favor with God. Go ahead and read. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. See, she told the, uh, the Virgin Mary that she said that she was going to bring forth a child, and you shall call his name Jesus. Jesus. Go ahead and read. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. He's going to be great and he's going to be called the son of the highest. Go ahead and read. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. In other words, he came through the lineage of David. And because he came through the lineage of David, he said he's going to sit on his, his father David's throne. And where did G, uh, David rule from? From Jerusalem. Go ahead and read. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And he's going to reign over the house of Jacob forever. Forever is absolute, sisters and brothers. And let's see when his kingdom going to end. Go ahead and read. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. And when he sit on the throne of David, there will be no end to his kingdom because it's going to be an everlasting kingdom. He's going to rule from that point and forevermore. That, is that it? Yes, we, sir. All right, that's good. So what is this child going to do? He's going he gonna to be called great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord going to give him the throne of David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And there will be no end to his kingdom. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the Old Testament. Because he, what he told him is he told him what's going to come to pass. Let's go to Psalm, the 132nd chapter. See what David said concerning this. Psalms, 132nd chapter. And we're going to pick it up at verse 11. Psalms 132 and verse 11. Psalms 132 and verse 11. When you get that, Brother Benaniah, go ahead and read. The Lord hath sworn in truth unto David. The Lord hath sworn to David. And we know the Lord cannot lie. He swore this to David. Go ahead and read. He will not turn from it. And he's not going to turn from it. In other words, this is etched in stone, sisters and brothers. Go ahead and read. Of the fruit of thy body will I set upon thy throne. In other words, he's telling David, I'm going to come through your body and I'm going to sit on your throne. But the Lord has sworn it. Lord told David, I'm going to come through your line and I'm going to sit on your throne. Go ahead and read. 
If thy children will keep my covenant and teach my and my testimony that I shall teach them, their children shall also sit upon Not thy throne. Not only that, David, but if your children will keep my covenant, in other words, obey my voice and do what my do what I say, I'm even have them sit on throne. Because that is what this is all about, sisters and brothers. Sitting in the kingdom of God, ruling with Christ. That is what this is all about. And if you do this thing right, you're going to sit with David on his throne and also with the master on his throne. Didn't he say that? He said, if thy children will keep my covenant and my testament, that I will teach them and their children also, and I will have them sit on thrones forevermore also. That's a good thing, sisters and brothers. But how you're going to go about sitting on his throne is keeping his covenant and his testimony. And that is what it's all about, being obedient to his word. That is what God always wanted for man. Just obey my voice and I have this for you all the time. But we as men always wax fat and kick and do what we want to do instead of doing the word of God. Let's look at it some more. But the Lord, he said, I swore that to David, that I was going to come through your lines and I'm going to sit on your throne. Let's go look at it some more. Let's go to Psalms 110th chapter. Psalms 110. Psalms 110, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Psalms 110. 110, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead and read. The Lord said unto my Lord. Now David said, the Lord said unto his Lord. In other words, God said unto his God. Go ahead and read. Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. So how many you have there? You have two. Now who is sitting on the right hand of the father, sisters and brothers? What Lord of David is sitting on the right hand of the father? Because that was what you have here. You have the father that said unto the son, sit thou on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. Because when the Lord died and rose up into heaven, he sat on the right hand of the Father. So who was that? Who was David, Lord? It was one, the one known to us as Jesus. And who is this Lord said unto my Lord? That the Lord that said unto David, Lord, is the known to us as the Father. So we have both of them here, the Father and the Son. But in the beginning, what were they? They were just made, they were two entities that made up the Godhead. It's simple, sisters and brothers. Believe in the scriptures. That's all you have to do. But what we're trying to show you is Jesus, he is the God of the creation. That's why David said, the Lord said unto my Lord. Who is David, Lord? The one known to us as Jesus. Let's look at it some more. This book going to tell you. Let's go to Matthew, the 22nd chapter. The Pharisees knew it. Everybody knew it. Because Jesus is going to ask these Pharisees a question now. Because they was always trying to trick demons. And how are you going to trick the creator into they look games? But the Lord always came back with scripture for them because he is called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. You can't pull no wool over the, over the father or the son's eyes. It's not possible. He is God. He knows all things. And he's going to let them know that. Matthew 22. And we're going to pick it up at verse 41, 22 and 41. Because these Pharisees was always trying to trick Jesus with some kind of sin. But the Lord always threw it right back in their lap. 41. Go ahead and read. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, saying, What think ye of Christ, whose son is he? So the master, he, he, he going to throw a little something out. He said, What do you think about the Christ or the Messiah? Or the anointed one. Well, how do you feel about the Christ? And whose son is he? Go ahead and read. They say unto him, the son of David. Well, the Christ, he's going to be the son of David. But we just read in 130, we just read in the 132nd chapter of uh, Psalm that the Lord had promised David that he was going to come through his line and he was going to sit on his throne. That is how they knew he was going to be the son of David. Go ahead and read. He saith unto them. How then does David in spirit? In other words, how do David in the word of God, because when he says spirit, he's talking about the word here. Go ahead and read. Call him Lord, uh -huh. saying, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. Now, we just read that, right? We just read that. And it did say, the Lord said unto my David, Lord, sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. Now that Jesus is going to ask him a question. Go ahead and read. 
If, if David then called him Lord, how was he his son? <laughs> A legit question. How did they answer it? Let's go ahead and read some more. And no man was able to answer him a word. Neither durst any man from that day forth ask him any more questions. Why they didn't ask him questions? Because they knew that God was going to come through David Lawrence and sit on his throne. That's why they asked, Jesus asked him, well, if he called him Lord, then how is he the son of David? They couldn't answer it because they understood that they knew it was God coming through the flesh. Let's look at it some more. You know, because I have been, I've even been told there's a certain religion out there that said Jesus is nothing but an angel. How are you going to compare an angel to the creator? It said in the beginning was the word, the word was get with God, and the word was God. And all things were created by him. So he is the one that created the angel. So how is you going to say he is the angel? The Lord ain't never told the angel to sit on his right hand. And we're going to read that. Go to Hebrews, the first chapter. Hebrews 1. For the religion that think Jesus is the angel, you need to read this he uh, first chapter of Hebrews and get around this. Because people come up and say some foolish things, sisters and brothers, but that is what I love about the word of God because the word of God cut through all lives, straighten out everything. Just like the Lord can show you straight out the individuals that say Jesus was an angel. Hebrews, the first chapter, and we're going to pick it up at verse 7. Hebrews 1 and 7. 1 and 7. When you get there, brother, go ahead and read. And of the angels, he saith, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire? He said, and the angels, he said, who maketh his angels spirit? Because angels are spiritual beings, sisters and brothers. If they want you to show, uh, reveal themselves to you, they can. If they don't want to see, want you to see them, they can. They can. They don't want to show them. To, they they won't show themselves to you. Go ahead and read. But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever uh -huh. and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. A scepter of righteousness. Because when Jesus come and when he judge, he is going to judge with righteousness. Of his scepter, in other words, of his kingdom, ain't nothing going to be there but righteousness. No filth is going to come before the Lord when he set up his kingdom. Go ahead and read. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Well, if his septum is going to be a kingdom of righteousness, you know he loved righteousness. Go ahead and read. Therefore God, even thy God. He said, therefore God, even your God. So we got God and another God. That's what it sounds like. Right, go ahead and read. Hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. In other words, you got God anointing God. Well, when did this happen? When the Father anointed the Son. That is when that happened. That is when you had God, even thy God, anointing thee with the oil of gladness above all thy fellow. Because the Father is who anointed Jesus. That's why the angel came down in the shape of a dove and said, this is my son who I'm well pleased with. And that was when he was baptized, right? And right after he came out of that baptism, what happened? He was tempted by Satan, and then he went and preached the kingdom. And that is what you're supposed to do, sisters and brothers. We as individuals, we got to learn about the true living God. We got to learn about Jesus. Then we got to come in his blood, which is grace, and then, which is the baptism. And then we got to go out there and preach this kingdom just like the master did. And, that, and we really want you to understand, when you get baptized, sisters and brothers, Satan going to take it up a notch and he going to come after you. That is why the Lord lets you see through scriptures that as soon as he was baptized, he came and he was tempted by Satan. And how you fight Satan is the same way he fighting Satan with the word of God, sisters and brothers. That's what it's all about. That's why it's called a two-edged word. It cut everything out the way. All you got to do is live it. Let's go a little further. So keep on down. But it say, but it say, but unto the Son, he said, Thy throne, O God, forever and ever, a scepter of righteousness is the scepter of our king of your kingdom. Because when the Lord set up his kingdom, it's gonna be set up on righteousness. Skip on down to verse 13 and read. But to which of the angels said he at any time? And he time, said, well, to any other angel have I said any time. Go ahead and read. Sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. He ain't never told an angel yet. So there go your little theory, 
saying that Jesus is an angel. He has never said that to an angel. Go ahead and read. Are they not all are not are they not all ministering spirits? Because what they job is they are ministering spirits. They are here to serve man or do whatever the Lord tell them to do. Go ahead and read that. Sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. Minister to who? Those that are heirs to salvation. Who is heirs to salvation? Man is. So they're here to serve you, sisters and brothers, whether it be good or evil. But he has never told the angel at any time to sit down on my right hand to make my enemies, to make your enemies be the foot. Never. So that, that little part about you saying that Jesus is an angel, you can throw that out the window. Let's go a little further. Let's go to uh, Exodus, the 24th chapter. You know, Exodus 24. Here in Exodus 24, this is when all the 74 elders were together. You had Moses, Aaron, Aaron, two sons, and 70 more elders. And the Lord going to tell them to come forth. Exodus 24 and 1. When you get there, brother, go ahead and read. And he said unto Moses, Come up unto the Lord, thou and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, uh -huh. and, and worship ye afar off. He said, Y'all, y'all seventy-four individuals, come on, but y'all worship me afar off. Go ahead and read. And Moses alone shall come near the Lord. But, but only Moses, he could come up before the Lord. Go ahead and read. But they should not come nigh, neither shall the people go up with him. Uh -huh. And Moses came and told and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the judgments and all the people answered with one voice and said, all the words which the Lord hath said will we do. And they did. Because when the Lord came on Mount Sinai, came with fire and thunder and smoke was all over, the, the people were scared. Mm -hmm. And when they seen that, they seen all that, they said, anything that the Lord say, we will do. But skip on down to verse 9 and read. Then went up Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel. Now we got 74 people here, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. And they saw the God of Israel. And then they even saw the God of Israel. Go ahead and read. And there was under his feet as it were a paved work of sapphire stone, and as it were the body of heaven in his, cle <coughs> in his clearness. Go ahead. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Also, they saw God and did, and did eat and drink. So we saw, we see 74 individuals, they seen God, and they ate in front of him, right? It say, what is it? They ate and, and drank. drank in front of him. Mm -hmm. But at the point is, they saw him. So this was back in the days of Moses. But what we need to find out, who is this God that they see? Because we understand through what we have read already that there are two entities that make up the Godhead, the one known to us as the Father and the one known to us as the Son. But in the beginning, they were just had the title God. Let's see who was this back in the days of Moses. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, and see who was that, who was that back in the, at Mount Sinai. Let's go to... Uh, 1 Corinthians 10, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. 1 Corinthians 10 and 1. When you get there, brother, go ahead and read. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under Lord, the cloud. Lord, I don't want you to be ignorant about this. I want you to get some understanding about this right here. Don't want you to be ignorant. That's why the Lord said, with all your getting, you get you some understanding. Go ahead and read. And all passed through the sea. Uh -huh. And we're all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. So we back in the days of Moses, right? Go ahead and read. And did all eat the same spiritual meat? And they did eat, right? Go ahead and read. And did all drink the same spiritual drink? For they drank of that spiritual rock. Who was that spiritual rock, though? He's going to tell you. Go ahead and read. That followed them. And that rock was Christ. So who was that, the God of Israel standing up there? It was the one known to us as Christ. Keep reading some more, though. But with many of them, God was not well pleased. But now they're calling Christ God, though, right? Go ahead and read. For they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. You want to learn not what not to do? Just go back in the Bible and see what the Lord did to the people that did wrong. And you see what they did wrong? You don't do it. In other words, you walk in his word and stay focused on it and don't deviate from it. Go ahead and read. 
Neither be ye idolaters as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Go ahead. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day, three and twenty thousand. See, the Lord's showing you what this fornication to do. That's why the Lord tell you don't go out there and commit fornication. I'm showing you what I'm doing to the people that commit fornication. I'm going to kill them. Go ahead and read. Neither let us tempt Christ. Oh, now it's say neither let us tempt Christ. Go ahead and read. As some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. So, in other words, they tempted Christ back then. And the Lord killed them with serpents. But it was God, though, right? Mm -hmm. And we let you know what part of the Godhead it was. It was the one known to us as Christ. He is the one that was following. Let's go a little further. Let's look at this thing again. Let's go to John, the fifth chapter. Because John going to let you know. John going to let them Pharisees, Jesus going to let them know in the book of John. He's going to tell them, search the scriptures. Mm -hmm. John 5, and we're going to pick it up at verse 37. John 5 and 37. <clears throat> 5 and 37. When you get there, go ahead and read. And the Father himself, which hath sent me, hath borne witness of me. See, uh, Lord said, hey, the Father himself who sent me, he bear witness of me. He sent me out here. Me and them discussed, we took sweet counsel together before I came here. Go ahead and read. You have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. Now, you ain't never heard God. He's letting you know you ain't never seen the Father. You ain't never seen the voice. But we just read it in Exodus, the 24th chapter, that the children of Israel, the 74 elders, they seen God, and they ate before him. So who was that? They were seeing then. He going to tell you. Go ahead and read. And ye have not his word abiding in you, for whom he hath sent him ye believe not. And the one you, they don't, and they don't believe to this day. Because some of the things the Lord, people say about the Lord cannot be true. God love everybody. God don't love everybody. If he loved everybody, why do we have a lake of fire? He give everybody a chance to get, get salvation. But the Lord, he hate wickedness. So don't say he loved everybody. God loved those that serve him. Go ahead and read. Search the scriptures. Now Jesus is saying, search the scriptures. Go ahead and read. For in them you think you have eternal life. But in them you think you got eternal life. Go ahead. And they are they which testify of me. But the ones they was writing about, they testifying of me. I'm the God of Israel. I'm the one who they talked about. That wasn't what the master letting them know. Go ahead and read. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. But you ain't going to come to me that you might have life because the one they writing about is about me. That is what the master is telling you here. Go ahead and read. I receive not honor from men. Hey, I don't want no honor from man. He letting you know he didn't want no honor from man. Go ahead. But I know you, that ye have not the love of God in you. Uh -huh. I am coming my father's Jesus name. Jesus let you know I'm coming in the father's name. You know that's the... A lot of people don't understand that that's the Father named Jesus also. Jesus, the Son, came to glorify the Father's name. What name did he glorify? The name Jesus. That is why when you get baptized in the name of Jesus, it covers the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. That's why you have to get baptized in the name of Jesus. When you get baptized in the name of Jesus, it covers the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. That's why Jesus said, go baptize them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. We understand Jesus came to glorify the Father's name. We also know that Jesus sent the Holy Ghost to uh, glorify his name. That is why you get baptized in the name of Jesus, because it covers all three of them, sisters and brothers. Keep reading, brother. I am coming in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. Uh -huh. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. Now, if you would have came in the name of Jehovah or something, they would have believed him. But he came in the name of the Father. Just like you got the Old Testament. They, they don't believe in the name Jesus because it's not in the Old Testament. But it wasn't time for the Father's name to be revealed. That's another lesson, too. Let's move on further, brother. Let's go to Exodus, the third chapter. We, we got to speed it up a little. Exodus 3 and 9. We're going to look at Moses. Go See, what we're doing, sisters and brothers, we're trying to rightfully divide the scriptures to let you get some understanding. So to put this puzzle together, 
That is what you got to put it upon line upon line and precept upon precept. That is why we're going here a little bit and there a little so that you can get some money. It doesn't go in chronological order. You understand? That is how you got to search the scriptures. That's what Jesus just said. Exodus 3 and 9, 3 and 9. When you get there, brother, go ahead and read. Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come now, unto Now, this you. is when, when Moses went up to the burning book. And the Lord told him, this is holy ground. The angel told him, this is holy ground. I see what they are doing to my children. Go ahead and read. And I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. And they oppressed them real bad, sisters and brothers. Go ahead and read. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Uh -huh. And Moses said unto God, Who am I, that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? Moses said, Who am I? Don't you know the Egyptians got a big army out there? What am I going to tell the children of Israel? Go ahead and read. And he said, certainly I will be with thee. The and Lord said, because if God is with you, who could be against you? Mm -hmm. If God is with you, who could be against you, sisters and brothers? Ain't nobody got no win with you if God is with you. Go ahead and read. And this shall be a token unto thee uh -huh. that, I have set, that I have sent thee. Uh -huh. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God upon this he mountain. He said, when you bring my people up out of that land, you're going to serve me up on this mountain. Go ahead and read. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent, unto, hath sent me unto you, then they shall say unto me, What is his name? Now, what when I come to them, they gonna ask you your name, God. What am I gonna to? What am I gonna tell? What am I gonna say to them? Go ahead and read. What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. He said, I am that I am. I am the Creator. I am Omega and Alpha. I am omnipotent. I am the beginning. I am the beginning and the end. Everything belonged to me. Go ahead and read. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. Uh-huh. The superior one. The most holy. I am the one. The Lord letting them know. So now that we done read that the Lord, uh, Lord told Moses, I am that sent me. Let's see who got this title then. Let's go to John the 8th chapter and we going to read this. You know, because here in John the 8th chapter, Jesus was letting them know. Hey, I'm from above. You from beneath. You of this world. I ain't of this world. You know, the Father sent me. If you don't think I'm the one that he sent, then, hey, you're going to die in your sins. The Lord was making these, uh, the Lord was telling these Jews this. And he's going to tell them something right here. John 8 and 47. Go ahead and read, brother. He that is of God heareth God's word. And that's why I think a lot of people say, well, I don't, I don't, you know, you mentioned the word of God. I don't think the Lord mean that. But if you believe in the word, if you believe in God, you're going to hear his words. Go ahead and read. Ye therefore hear them not because ye are not of God. See, and a lot of people want to know why people don't hear the word of God. Because they don't want to belong to God. Because they want to continue in their wickedness. They, they want to continue doing what they want to do. Because something, one thing about this man, he hate rules. And God, if you're going to serve God, you got rules you got to keep, sisters and brothers. Go ahead and read. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well thou, that thou art a he, Samaritan. He said, what did he say? Go ahead and read. Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan uh -huh. and hast the devil. Uh, he said, now we know you got a devil. Go ahead and read. Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and ye do dishonor me. He said, hey, I'm coming to honor the father, but you dishonoring me. The Father sent me, and you dishonored me. So if the Father sent me, and you dishonored him, me, you dishonored him. Go ahead and read. And I seek not mine own glory. There is one that seeketh and judges. Go ahead. That verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. And if you keep the word of God, you will never see death. This physical body might die, but that spiritual life going to live forever. And that's what the Lord is talking about here, sisters and brothers, is getting everlasting life. Go ahead and read. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast that thou hast the devil. Abraham is dead and the prophets. And thou sayest, If a man keep my saying, he shall leave, never taste death. Uh -huh. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which he is dead? And the prophets are dead. Whom makest thou thyself? No, so now... They didn't know 
You talking to God right here. He said, we know Abraham is dead and the prophet. No, they are not dead. They are asleep. Because the day going to come when the Lord going to roll back the heavens like a scroll and the dead in Christ going to be raised, you know, and Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets going to be risen. Go ahead and read. Jesus answered, if I honor myself, my honor is nothing. Because Jesus didn't come to honor himself. He came to glorify the Father, which the same job you as a servant is should come and glorify the Father. And how do you go about doing that is by serving him in truth and obeying his voice. Go ahead and read. He is my father that honoreth me, uh -huh. of whom ye say that he is your God. Go ahead. Yet had ye have not known him, but I know him. Jesus and said, you don't know him, but I know him. I was sitting right by him. Go ahead and read. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. you see, look, Jesus said, if I tell him I don't know him, then I'm going to be a liar just like you. Go ahead and read. But I know him and keep his saying. And that's the key. Jesus said, I know him and I keep him saying. And if you say you know God, you're going to keep his saying. Go ahead and read. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. See, Jesus said, Abraham, he rejoiced to see my day, and he was glad. Go ahead and read. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet 50 years old. He said, you know what? You ain't even 50 years old, Jesus. Now, how did you see Father Abraham? Go ahead and read. And hast thou seen Abraham? Uh -huh. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. So Jesus was letting them know, Hey, I was there in the beginning. You know, I was there in Abraham day, and I was there in Moses day. I was just came to uh, Abraham as God Almighty. But now I came to Moses and told him, I am. I am the superior spirit. I am the one. But who was that Moses was talking to back then? The one known to us as what? Jesus. Let's look at it some more. Let's go to John 14 chapter because, you know, some people, they will see something. Now, we done read all these scriptures showing that Jesus is God. Now, then some people will read one verse and they will run with it. Now, you got to stick with the masses, sisters and brothers. But if you don't understand something, then you shouldn't speak on it. Because here Jesus is going to let them know that the Father is great in him. But what time is this? Let's go to John 14 and we're going to pick it up at verse 26. 14 and 26. John 14 and 26. When you get there, go ahead and read. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. Who the Holy Ghost? This is another lesson. But who, the, who named the uh, Holy Ghost going to be coming? In his it's going to come in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Yes, sir. Like I said earlier. Jesus came in the Father's name, the Son's name was Jesus, and, the, and Jesus sent the Holy Spirit in his name. That's why you get baptized in the name of Jesus. And we do, a, do do a thorough, detailed lesson on baptism. But keep reading, brother. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Well, so this comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, ain't going to make you run up and down and dance all over the place. It's going to be bring remembrance of whatever the Lord have told you. So in order for the Holy Ghost to work in you, you got to read something. Go ahead and read. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not that ain't he the prince of peace? Mm -hmm. He said, peace I leave unto you. Go ahead and read. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Go ahead. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye loved me, ye would rejoice, because I said, I go unto the Father. He said, I'm going to the Father. Go ahead and read. For my Father is greater than I. Now, when individuals see that, the Father is greater than I. See, he ain't God. But what was the, what, what was, what kind of? Was the Lord in his fleshly form or spirit form? Was he was in the fleshly form. We know it's, it, it, it was, that's right, terrestrial. That's what it was. You got celestial and terrestrial. It was his fleshly body. Of course the Father is greater than him. But we're going to see what, what was that in the beginning. That is what we're focusing on. Skip down. Let's go to John the 17th chapter. We're going to break it on down to you. Let's put it all together now. John 17 and 1. This is what when the, uh, the master is about to die here. 
John 17 and 1. Go ahead and read. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee. Uh -huh. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, uh -huh. that they might know thee, the only true God uh -huh. in Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. The only true God in Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Go ahead and read. I have glorified thee on the earth. Uh -huh. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. See, and Jesus went and did his job. Mm -hmm. He brought the people to the Father. Now you're about to die for the people. Go ahead and read. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. So if he, he was glorified before, what, what was he before the world was? He right was in his godly form. Mm -hmm. But now he's in his fleshly form right yes, here. Sir. So isn't the Father greater than him at this point? Yeah, he's greater than him. Because he have a terrestrial body. He doesn't have the celestial body. He's not in the spirit form no more. But he say, glorify me with the glory I had before the world was. But he say, in the beginning, God mm -hmm. created. Yes, so before the world was, in the beginning, it was just God, wasn't it? So what did he have? He had the title of God. Let's look at it some more. Paul going to tell you, let's go to Philippians 2. Because we need to have this man and you that was in Christ Jesus. Philippians 2 and 5. Philippians 2 and 5. Philippians 2 and 5. When you get there, Brother Ben and I, go ahead and read, brother. Let this mind be in you. Which now, was, sisters and brothers, you let this mind be in you. Go ahead and read. Which was also in Christ Jesus. This mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Go ahead and read. Who being in the form of God. Hey, when he was in the form of God, go ahead and read. Thought it not robbery to be equal with and God. And it wasn't robbery to be equal with God. When he was in his godly form, they were equal. And he knew it wasn't robbery. Go ahead and read. But made himself of no reputation. But he didn't make no big thing out of it. Jesus knew that he was God in the beginning. And he was going to be God again. But he didn't make no reputation when he came in the flesh, did he? Go ahead and read. And took upon him the form of a servant. So you had God taking on the form of a servant. Go ahead and read. And was made in the likeness of men. Because God was made in the likeness of man. That's what we've been trying to tell you all along. But in the beginning, he was God. And now he's sitting on the right hand of the Father, too. Go ahead and read. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death. Go ahead. Even the death of the cross. Uh -huh. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Now Jesus, he gave Jesus a name above every name. You think the Father's going to give him a name above his? Go ahead and read. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. Everybody going to bow down to this name, Jesus. Go ahead and read. Of the things in heaven Do you, and... Ain't the Father in heaven? You think the Father going to bow down to the Son? No, everybody going to bow down to the name Jesus. Didn't Jesus say he came to glorify the Father's name? Yes, sir. So they going to bow down to who? Jesus. Who they have bowed down in the beginning? The Father and the Son, son which Jesus. is the Godhead. Go ahead and read. Of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ lives Lord to the glory of God the Father. So it was just told you. So that was simple then. Let's go a little further. Let's go to Isaiah the fourth, 44th chapter. Isaiah 44. Going to pick it up a little bit, brother. Isaiah 44, because we want to get all this in. Are there 44 and 1? When you get there, brother, go ahead and read. Ye now hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. Uh -huh. Thus saith the Lord that made thee and formed thee from the womb, uh -huh. which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou, Jeshurun, whom I have chosen. He said, don't, don't fear, Jacob. Go ahead and read. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. You want to know the Lord? If you truly want to get to know the Lord, let him pour this water on you. Go ahead and read. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thine offspring. Uh -huh. And they shall spring up as among the grass as willows by the water of courses. And when the spirit come up on Israel, what they going to start doing? Go ahead and read. One shall say, I am the Lord's, and another shall call himself by the name of Jacob. Because and the Lord people are finally 
finding out who they are and what their job is to do. That's why you got brothers calling themselves Israel. And that's why you got call, brothers calling themselves Jacob. Go ahead and read. And another shall subscribe with his hand unto the Lord and surname himself by the name of Israel. Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. Who is the Redeemer? Ain't it Jesus mm -hmm. himself? Go ahead and read. I am the first and I am the last and beside me there is no God. Is you what he said? I am the first and the last and beside me there is no other God. Let's see who that is. Let's go to Revelation, the first chapter, and we're going to pick it up at verse 10. 1 and 10. Come on, let's go, brother. 1 and 10. When you get there, go ahead and read. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Now, John talking about being in the spirit on the Lord's day. Go ahead and read. And heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega. He the said, first, I am Alpha, Alpha and Omega. Go ahead and read. The first and the last. What, what thou seest, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, unto Syria. He said, write this unto the church. Go ahead and read. Unto Smyrna and unto Pegamos and unto Thyateria, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. Go ahead. And I turned to see a voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Skip on down to verse uh, 15, uh, 14 and read. His head and his hair were white like wool. Now this individual, his hair was like white and like wool. The one who said, I'm the Alpha and Omega. Go ahead and read. And white as snow. Uh -huh. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Go ahead. And his feet were like unto fine brass. And if they were burned in a furnace, and his voice were, were in his voice as the sound of many waters. Go ahead and read. And he had in his right hand seven stars. And out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. Now, we know who mouth is. This is none other than the master himself, Jesus. Go ahead and read. And his countenance was as the, as the sun shineth in his strength. Uh -huh. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he sit, laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. This individual said, Fear not, I am the first and the last. But let's see who this is. Go ahead and read. I am he that liveth and he was, was he dead. He was the one that liveth and was dead. Go ahead and read. And behold, I am alive forevermore. And now I am alive forevermore. Who was, who was the one that liveth? and then died and rose from the grave. It Jesus. was none other than Jesus. Go ahead and read. Amen. And have the, th the keys of hell and of death. He said, and I have the keys of hell. Didn't, he, didn't Jesus come out of that grave and say, all power is given to me mm -hmm. when he came out of it? Yes, but he sir. said, I'm Alpha and Omega. I am the first and the last. And then I said, I'm the first and the last. There's no other God beside me. Go to 1 uh, Timothy, the third chapter, and read one verse, verse 16. Go ahead and read. 3 and 16, 1 Timothy 3 and 16. Read that verse, brother. And without controversy. Without no more controversy. Go ahead and read. Great is the mystery of godliness. Now, this is great mystery of godliness. Go ahead. God was manifest in the flesh. He, he came forth in the flesh. God himself came forth in the flesh. Go ahead. Justified in the spirit. Justified by the word of God. Go ahead and read. Seen of angels. Seen of the angels. Go ahead and read. Preached. Didn't angels see him when yes. he came up out of that grave? Go ahead and read. Preached unto the Gentiles. And he was preached unto the Gentiles. Paul came preaching them to the Gentiles. Gentiles all day. Go ahead. Believed on in the world. Believed on in the world. Received up into glory. Received up in the glory. So it was God. Great is the mystery. So who is Jesus? He is the God of the creation. And I hope you have learned something from this lesson. Be sure to tune in with us next week, sisters and brothers. Same time, same station. And as always, sisters and brothers, Read your Bible and keep the commandments of God. We thank you.